Well, uh, once again, thanks for covering Wake Forest football and for being here. Uh, Saturday, that was a, a really special night for our program. Uh, once again, I want to thank the students, uh, close to 4,600 students at a school that has an enrollment of 5,400, 5,500. Uh, again, that that section, their noise, their energy. I mean, it's been awesome this year. It's really added so much. And I also want to thank our fans. Um, you know, that was a big time environment. It was a packed house. And uh, it was a great college football game. It was two really good teams. Uh, it went back and forth. Uh, and, you know, it had everything college football had, part of the sloppiness that makes college football fun. You know, there's six turnovers and, you know, kick returns and missed tackles and bouncing balls and, you know, high level quarterback play. Uh, but really so proud of the way that we competed. And we were fortunate to find a way to win. You know, you have two games like that and it's one bounce of the ball either way. And you can come out of it with your fans rushing the field or you can come out of it in a state of depression. And we've experienced the, the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows in the last two weeks. And, and that's college football. So, you know, our ability to, to bounce back, uh, I thought offensively, uh, in some ways it was one of our sloppier games. Um, it wasn't our cleanest performance, but we still managed to score 45 points. Um, Sam missed some throws and we had some picks, but holy cow, in the fourth quarter in that last drive, he was money. You know, converting a third and seven, a third and nine, a third and 11, and then our offensive line uh, to take the last six plays and go 33 yards and take four minutes off the clock and score that touchdown, uh, really proud of them. Uh, defensively, I thought it was a great bounce back effort. You know, the scoreboard says 42 points, but you know, we gave up two balls over our heads you know, we were obviously banged up at corner and NC State knew that and I think took some shots and hit a couple of them. And, you know, the, the kickoff coverage really allowed 14 points. It's hard to, to pin those two on the defense. Uh, our third down defense was outstanding. Uh, you know, we, they converted three of 14. And, and to me, really, that, that was the game, is that our ability to convert third downs, especially in the fourth quarter, and our ability to get them off the field on third down. Um, and again, we have some things to clean up in the kicking game. Uh, it felt like 2019 again. You know, we had the Duke game that year that we gave up to and the, the Louisville game that we gave up to. And I'm watching this saying, I thought we fixed that problem, but apparently not. Uh, and, and that, you know, usually that's gonna cost you a game. So to be able to battle back from that was, was really encouraging. Um, you know, and, and again, I just want to thank our fans, the way they rushed the field afterwards. So usually when the game's over, I have the players, you know, just come in the locker room and we break them down and then they head off and see their families. And uh, to just watch that whole scene, I just stood there for 15, 20 minutes and just said, this is really cool that, you know, we were able to help create a moment like that for our players and our students and our fans. Um, it was a, a very rewarding win. Um, but like we tell our team, uh, the reward for winning a big game is another big game. And now we head down to Death Valley uh, to play what's been the, uh, the most dominant program in the ACC and one of the most dominant programs in the country over the last six to eight years. Um, I have great respect for Dabo and his staff. Um, I think he's done an amazing job there. He's got a great assistant coaching staff. Um, and I really like Dabo. Uh, over the pandemic, we were on a bunch of committees together and I, I really like him and enjoy him. I think he's a good person, obviously an excellent football coach. And um, he's just someone to have a, a real high opinion of. And, He's good for college football and, and good for the ACC. Um, and I, I really think that this has been one of his best coaching jobs. Sometimes when you know, everything goes your way, things run themselves. Um, you know, this has not been a year that everything bounced their way. And you can tell he's never lost his team. Uh, they've gotten better. 
Uh, they've won three in a row, so they have the longest winning streak in the ACC right now. They've won five of their last six. Uh, they are still in the hunt for the ACC uh, Atlantic uh, Championship. And so, again, in my mind, this is another uh, championship game. Uh, and we're going to a place that they've won 33 games in a row. I think the last time they lost in Death Valley was 2016 against Pitt. Uh, you know, for them, it starts on defense. Uh, they have one of the best defensive coordinators in, in all of football. Um, they've got great players and that combination of being well coached and having talent. So once again, they're the best defense in the ACC. They're giving up 15 points a game and a little over 300 yards. Um, I think the offense is improving. Um, Clemson recruits the very best players in the country. And I say this every week, that you prepare for what the team is capable of doing. Um, you know, they have talented quarterbacks, extremely gifted receivers, um, you know, offensive linemen that are big, physical, athletic, uh, running backs that everybody in the country wanted. And, you know, they're a little younger than they've been. Um, and at some point it's going to click for them and it could happen at any time. And again, the, you know, those guys didn't, they're, they're very well coached. Um, so this is, uh, you know, certainly a, a team that we've, you know, we've struggled against in the past. And, uh, you know, we have to go down there and, and play really good football to, to, to be competitive with Clemson. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, and we love being in this position. You know, these are the games you, you, you know, when you, you come to Wake Forest, you dream you're going to be coaching in a game like this. That you head down to Death Valley and, and play Clemson and you're in the hunt for an Atlantic and an ACC championship. So obviously we want to play well and need to have a great week of preparation. Well, it was, it was really cool. My, uh, my daughter, who you all know I'm really close with, that she came down after the game and gave me a big hug. And, uh, you know, then I was shaking, you know, the NC State players' hands and hugging some of our players. And then you saw all the students come down. And I was kind of in the middle of it. And I just kind of walked up to our locker room that I had a little bit of an elevated view. And, uh, you know, my daughter was hugging me and I had my arm around her and I was just watching it. And I just said, this is pretty cool. This is, you know, you have those kind of surreal moments uh, that you just want to suck it in and enjoy it. And our players could have stayed out there for three hours and I would have waited. I just really said, this is cool. And, and you know, usually after a game, hey, get in, get in, get in. And I'm like, no, let them stay. That they've earned this. Um, you know, we had all those students there, and they felt part of it, which is important. And it was just, uh, you know, it was one of those moments that you just, it's not going to happen too often. And so when it happens, you need to be able to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy those moments, why are we doing this? Well, uh, when the year started down at, uh, in Charlotte, right, because the official start of season is media day. It's the day we always, huh? I thought it was spring ball or even before that. Whatever. I, I coach as we change when the start is all the time. Um, you know, I said our, our goal is that I hope when we go to Clemson this year that we're, we're playing for a championship. Um, so you, you play the games in the order uh, that they come. Um, I liked that that game was, was later, uh, you know, and you want to, you know, sometimes when you play those guys early, you're, you're battling uphill the rest of the year um, and hoped if we got off to a good start, it was a game that would have conference implications. So I, I don't know if there's pageantry in it. They're the next opponent. They're a team that we respect, and they've been the best team in the ACC. So it would be um, obviously a huge win for our program if we can, can find a way, but um, again, we've uh, you know they, they've certainly had our number. Okay, going back to NC State a little bit, there were a bunch of them fallen, or injured, and that, that, that happened a lot with you guys trying. They're trying to slow down the tempo. 
Are you guys just that physical? That <laughs> um, you know, who knows? It's, it's really hard for the officials because who knows what's real and who's not. Um, you know, I, 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 again, only, only they know that. So I'm a little bit of an idealist. So I, I certainly want to believe that that wasn't planned or coached or faked. So I'm, other teams have definitely done it. NC State has never done that to us before. Um, it's not something they've done. I, I don't think Dave would coach that. Um, you know, I mean, you don't know how those guys felt at the time. So, to me, you got to take the high road on that. I'm going to assume that they were hurt, and you know, it is what it is. We're going we're gonna to try to find a way to get our best players out there. Um, you know, we were down uh, Kalen, we were down Gavin, and uh, we didn't know if Jasir was going to play till right before the game. And so what we had to do is we had to take our nickels, which is uh, JJ and uh, Zion, and we had to make those guys corners. And so we had to make our safeties nickels. Um, and that's really where I thought our defensive staff did a great job is, you know, we were playing guys out of position and we had to, to keep it simple enough that guys would know what to do and play fast. Uh, but NC State motions half the time. So you also had to be able to make adjustments and coverage checks and all those things so you're lined up correctly. And, you know, Nasir and Nick and Malik is really coming on for us. And Trey Red is... Trey Red, he's steady in the boat, but you know I think anybody when you get to week 11, it's never ideal from a health standpoint. Um, so we're, you know, you just every game you, you try to get your best players out there. I mean, we had the same issue at slot receiver, right? We had to put Taylor Marin back at slot. He hasn't played there in a year, and it tells you how smart he is. He's played outside receiver all year. He jumped in at the slot and had a great game for us. You know, the third. You know, Les, we're all day to day. <laughs> so we're all day to day. Um, you know, we'll get some of them back, and we probably won't get others. And I mean, we, we went a little lighter in practice today. So we had some guys out there practicing that hopefully, because of the way we practiced, we'll get a better practice tomorrow. But people know what's at stake. Uh, sometimes the, the level of the game helps people heal, too. Dave, you talk about you've been talking about the offense all year. What makes Warren so good as an offensive coordinator? You, you've mentioned talked about him before. He just sees things and anticipates things that I've never seen anyone else do. I mean, he just the the, the spatial like I, there's there's so much to being a good offensive coordinator. But you know, number one, he's a great evaluator of players. You know, his ability to say, this player can do this for us if we use them this way. So I think, number one, it's the placement of the personnel. Um, it's the way he systematically teaches the offense in the spring and the fall camp that lets us adjust to anything we see during the season. Um, he anticipates how we're going to be defended and then anticipates what the change-ups may be. Um, and he's just a, got a really good knack for calling plays. It's just one of those things that some people have it. There's other people who are good coaches. They just don't have that sixth sense of what to call, when to call it. And Warren has it. I mean, he's, he's brilliant. He is incredibly hardworking. He's the first, you know, when you're a younger coach, you try to beat everybody in the office with Warren. <laughs> I'm not even trying to fight that fight. I mean, he's in here so early. And before the whole staff gets here, he already knows what a team does his work ethic is incredible, and uh, I'm very fortunate. I've been able to work with him 13 years, and I've learned a lot of football from him. Have you ever been out you scribbling plays on napkins or anything like that, or is he that? He, he, I just think he, 
the, the amount of study he does in the off season, you know, watching NFL film, other schools, and it might just be tweaking one play in one way. Uh, but he's so, th so thorough with his research. And, um, and again, it's a lot of people can research stuff, but his ability to then place our players um, in the right spot at the right time. And again, it's just the way he systematically teaches the offense. And, uh, you know, so again, I'm really glad to be able to say this about him because I know the first couple of years here, you know, people, I knew we had a good coach. And I knew once, you know, the talent caught up that we'd have a really good offense. And uh, I'm really fortunate to have been able to work with him 13 years and, you know, appreciate his loyalty. He's had many opportunities to leave. And, um, you know, he's very happy here and does a great, great job. It's a great coach. I mean, it's a scramble, and it's not so much day to day, but then game day. Uh, you know, one guy goes down, and it affects three different special teams. And then you also have the redshirt role. So, do you play this guy for a quarter and lose one of his four games? Um, you're making all those, you know, you talk about it before the game, but then you're making it at warp speed. And it's a game that you absolutely have to have. You know, there's. The next game doesn't matter if you don't find a way to win that one. So, I mean, it's constant juggling, um, you know, and it's it's part of football. And college football, you know, there's 12 games. We're in week 11. I don't think anybody's healthy. You know, we've had the injury bug. They've had the injury bug. NC State certainly was shorthanded. I don't think anybody's fully healthy at this point in the year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, they always do a great job scheming. Um, you know, when you're blocking a bunch of first and second round draft picks, you know, you're not going to be able to hold the ball as long. Um, you know, when there's five star kids covering your receivers, the, you're not going to get as open. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, they, they are extremely well coached. Uh, he always has a good plan. And they've got really good players. You know, he, he's a guy that doesn't want to concede an inch. I mean, you know, even the games that they're beating us by a lot of scores, I mean, late in the game, he is not conceding an inch. I mean, a few years ago when Kendall Hinton was in there and Kendall couldn't throw it, I mean, he was running house blitzes against us. Um, he's just very competitive, and that's why he's so good at what he does. So, again, good players, good coaching, well schemed. They make you earn everything. And I mean, how many games did they go this year before they allowed an offensive touchdown? It was like the third or fourth game. So they're, uh, this is going to be a, it's going to be a tough out. Any added music to practice to get ready and prepare for that environment? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have to work, you know, you know, they're allowed on third down. So, you know, like Syracuse and, and other games, um, you know, even Virginia, I mean, it's in Clemson, there's more people, they're louder. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to work on those things like we always do when we play them. Okay, does the coaching carousel spins, do you have any interest in hearing from the other schools? <laughs> no. Um, you know, I, I understand that those are things that come up and you have to ask them. Uh, but I mean, we're, we're trying to get ready to play Clemson, so it's, it's enough of a challenge without complicating things. David Till suggested today that Virginia Tech should reach out to Dave Foster. <laughs> Is that a job you'd be interested in? Uh, less. I mean, again, I, I get the second round of questions. I mean, we're trying to be Clemson. We're trying to, you know, we're getting ready for a championship game. I mean, all my focus and time is devoted to that. So 
those are really not things I concern myself with. I'm, I'm pretty locked into what we're doing right now. Dave, on the depth chart, it looked like you shuffled your defensive line a little bit. Is it just kind of the, the way Clemson does things, or is it just personnel, or how did you? We just wanted to see if Connor was still paying attention to the depth chart. <laughs> so, um, I, I, did we do that? I believe Luigi is in a different yeah. spot behind Rondell. Well, if you guys know, last week um, we started uh, Jasheen, and he played really well. And uh, so we're just, you know, all five of those ends are playing. So, you know, Rondell and, and Jasheen will start, but Luigi and Jacori and Kendra and all those guys will play. You know, and that's one spot we've been fortunate. Um, you know, we, st we got five playable ends and, and really four or five playable tackles. So that's helped us. I don't know if you notice in games, we'll just do almost like hockey subs, put a full new line in there. And uh, all those guys are, are very capable. What's that? Are you breaking injury news on Ja'Cory Johns being back? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's, he now he can go. So um, he's, he's back in the depth chart, and he's up and playable. And, you know, he hasn't played in a while. Um, you know, so, you know, he'll, he'll get in there, though. He looked, good, he looked good today. So he got out there today and practiced full. And so I, I guess that's news. Was he close Saturday to go? I mean, you know, it's one of those things that we didn't, we didn't really have to play him because of where we were. We were healthy and we had guys playing well and the nature of, of NC State and what they do personnel-wise, it was a good game to have Jasheen and Rondell. You know, NC State does so many two tight end stuff, um, you know, but he's, you know, every time a guy comes back from an injury, whatever week they're ready, they're more ready the next week. And in that first week, if you can kind of get them going in practice and you don't need to, like we always say, hey, you know, if you had to break, you know, break glass to play them, they were playable. But if you have other guys that have practiced and played more in game-ready mode, if you can wait a week, it's always a little better for them. All right. Thanks, guys.